So tonight, I just titled, I am not good with titles. I need to say some, say different, I guess, but I was actually going to title it, um, I forget what I was going to title it, Be Strong. That's what I was going to title it, and I was like, I think I've already named a sermon that not too long ago, maybe. So I was like, I need to come up with something different, so I titled it Strength. Original, I know. Okay, but at least with my titles, when you see them, you know what you're getting, right? So if you don't need strength, just go to the next sermon. Okay. So we're going to start here with Ephesians 6.10, and we are going to talk tonight just on his strength and being strong. And um, as I was preparing tonight, I just heard, actually uh, this morning when I got up out of bed, I just was like, okay, Lord, you know, what you're wanting to share tonight, what you're, what's the theme, what are you wanting to say? And I just started praying in the Holy Spirit, and I just had that verse come to me. It's not by might, it's not by, by power, but it's by my spirit. And that phrase just kept rolling around in me. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by his spirit. And you know, so much of our life can be spent in our might, our power, but you know what? It's by his spirit. You know where strength comes from is by his spirit. And so tonight, just to receive that, that the word that goes forth tonight isn't in my ability, isn't, it is by his spirit. And I heard uh, Brother Keith say this. He said, anything, or actually it was Pastor Willie George. He said, when you know that it's a really Holy Ghost inspired word is when that ministry is coming forth from the pulpit and you're taking notes, which I do. So I'm writing my notes. And he said, it's like the minister kind of keeps going, and you're kind of caught in your moment taking notes. And the Holy Spirit's bringing scriptures. He's bringing words. He's bringing stuff to you that is personal to you, that takes you. That's where you know that's the Holy Spirit. So many times people have come to Pastor Nate and I and go, oh, my gosh, you taught exactly what I needed. How did you know? It's like, did you know something? Did you know something about my life? And I'm like, no, I didn't. But the Holy Spirit did, and he's so good to give us what we need right when we need it. And you know what's amazing about him? He makes it personal. Isn't that amazing where you can leave church and like feel that God ministered to you in such a personal way? You can leave and I could ask every person in here, what did God show you? And you know what? It may be along the same topic or theme, but it would be personalized to you. That is amazing to me to see how good God is that he's not just a father of many children, but he's a personal father. He's a personal father. He knows what we need, and he delivers it to us right on time and with exact preciseness. Isn't that amazing? So let's pray tonight before we get into the word. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you tonight, and we put faith, we mix our faith together as a congregation tonight, and we say that we have ears to hear. We have eyes that see. Say that. I have ears to hear. I have eyes that see what the Spirit is saying. Thank you, Lord. We do. We do. And we put an expectation on you, not any man, not any person, but our expectation and our hope is in you. And we thank you that as the word is ministered tonight with boldness, that signs accompany your word, miracles and demonstrations of your spirit at the teaching of your word. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so if you have your Bibles um, or devices, you can um, go to Ephesians 6.10. And it says this, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And in looking at this verse today, we can kind of break this apart and we can say, be strong. What does it say? In the Lord and in the power of your might. Whose might? I like talk back. Whose might? His might. You know what's amazing is you can take a verse and you can take it and you can kind of pick it apart and you can emphasize certain things. So I could say, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And you know what the focus would be there? Be strong. And then we could say, be strong in the Lord. 
Well, what's that highlighting? That my strength comes, what? In the Lord and the power of his might. Or I could say, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. This is what's called meditating. Do you know how much God can speak if I just take a couple words out of a verse and I highlight those and I go over them? Even when I say it out loud, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, what's it doing? It's emphasizing and it's causing my mind to do what? To think on his ability. To think on what the word said. And you know what it's actually doing? It's renewing my mind. You know how good it is to not just read scripture, but to actually say it out loud? There is such a difference when, (laughs) I've been trying to do this more and more, just when it comes to me that I don't just think it, but I say it. And we've been talking so much about that. Speak the words, speak the word, your words, words, words. But it makes such a difference when I take the word and I don't just think it, but I actually declare it out of my mouth. Try it with this verse tonight. (laughs) Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And you know what? The more you say it, the more it gets in you. The more you start to believe it. Why? Because faith comes when when what happens? When we hear the word of God, faith comes and you actually begin to believe it, you actually begin to believe what you're speaking. It's amazing. So, many times in the word we see where God says, be strong. That's what we're going to highlight on tonight is be strong. So if I said to Nate, be strong, many times what do we think of when we hear the word be strong? Hey, Juan, you need to be strong. It's like we, we think of it as like kind of a pep talk. Or at least I do. Encouragement. Be strong. You can do it. Be strong. Be strong. You can get through this. Be strong. And you know what? With humans, that's pretty much what it is. When I say be strong to someone. If I were, you're doing a workout or something, I'm like, be strong. It's like encouragement. Come on. You can do it. Be strong. But you know when God says in his word, be strong, it's not just a pep talk. You guys are going to have to talk back. It's not just a pep talk. It's not just like, come on, be strong, guys. You can do it. Be strong. You got it. Do you know at those very words is empowerment? So when he says be strong, it's not just like a coach on the sidelines going, you can do it. It's actually in those words, be strong. When, he, when I take it like he's saying it to me and I personalize it in the word. So right here, Evan, and I picture God saying, Evan, be strong. You know what that's actually doing? It's empowering me to do it. What does it say? That God's word is what? Alive and full of power. That means when he says something, it's not just encouragement. I mean, we all need encouragement, and thank you, Lord, for encouragement, and thank you that he does. But I'm so thankful that he doesn't just encourage me, but he empowers me. So when he says, be strong in the Lord, he really means like, Be strong. Like when I say it, strength is coming into you. And we have to see it that way. If I see it just like a pep talk, then I just hear, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. How many of us have heard that verse all the time? We just think, be strong. I just got to be strong. I got to be strong. Well, what's that? That's reverting back to a powerless thing. That's saying in my power and my ability. And you know what? Yeah, you can. But you're going to reach your limit. You're going to tap out. You're going to reach every one of us in here, no matter how strong we are or how strong you think you are or how much you think you can carry or how much you think you can care about. You're going to reach your max. You're going to reach your breaking point where you go, I can't do this anymore. I'm not strong enough to do this. But you know who is? The one who's telling you, be strong. We have to see that. Hey, be strong. And when he's saying that, strength is actually going into me to do what? Not my ability, but his ability. So, so God uses words and his word to create. He's not just communicating with us. His word actually does something. This book is the only book that is alive. 
So you know what? It's not just communicating stuff to me. It's not just a pep talk book or a good life book or it's, it's alive. It's actually when it's spoken, when I'm reading it, when I'm declaring it, it's creating stuff in me. It's creating my path. It's clearing out my path. It's laying a path for my children. It's laying a path for our city. It's laying a path for whatever you're putting the word on. It's creative. Say that. The word of God is creative. And you know, sometimes I think we minimize the power of the word. The ability that it has. We, we put so much on ourselves instead of just letting the word do what the word does. What's my job? My job is to receive it and believe it and speak it out. And let the word do the work. Let the word do the creating. Let the word do the strength in you. Let the word empower you. Let the word heal you. Let the word deliver you. Whatever the word needs to do in you, let the word do it. So his commands in his word are enabling and they're empowering. So think of this. When Peter walked on the water, when Jesus said, hey, Peter, come. Come walk on the water. You know what? Before Jesus ever said that, Peter could have stepped out onto the water and you know what? He would have sank right to the bottom. But what happened? Jesus did what? He said something. And when he said something, there was power in his words that created stability on the water for Peter to do what? Step out on the water and not sink. So what was it? There was a creative ability in Jesus' words when he said, come. What happened? Immediately, that water, it was ground. And Peter did what? He stepped out. And what was it? It was firm. So the word is an invitation. What was it? He was inviting Peter to say, hey, come on, come on. So it invites and it empowers. Isn't that amazing? So when the Lord says, be strong, we shouldn't hear it like, I have to be strong. How many of you, whenever you've heard, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you go to, I got to be strong. I'm raising my hand like, I got to be strong. Be strong, Evan. No, 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 no. Let's flip that. When we hear the word be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, we got to think, I, not I have to be strong. Thank you, Lord. You're strong. And when you're saying be strong, he's actually imparting his strength into us. In those words is his strength that is actually being imparted into us if we receive it. What is it? We have to receive it. We have to receive it by faith. We have to take those words and say, Lord, I believe that. I believe you're imparting strength to me. Therefore, I am strong because you're imparting your strength into me. And we have to receive it. Okay, for, so First John 4, 4 says this. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So that means no matter what comes against you on the outside, there's one who's greater There's one who's bigger. There's one who's wiser in you. Did you know there's someone in you? If you've received Jesus, he's in you. Therefore, anything that I'm faced with, reports, news, whatever, relationship issues, things that are going on, finances, whatever it might be around me, outside here, Guess what? There's someone in me that's greater than that. But you know what? I'm not going to see it like that if I see everything outside of me as something I got to fix or I got to make right or I got to do something. But the moment that I say, no, Lord, you're greater in me. You are greater than this. Not in my own strength, not in my own ability. You're greater. But what do we have to do? We have to take it. 
and we have to believe it. So when you feel down, we all have those days. When you feel discouraged, we all have those days. The days you want to quit and give up, what should we do? Put our hand on ourselves and say, Lord, you're greater. You're greater. Don't, don't just do nothing. The days that I feel discouraged, you know what? I'm going to keep on feeling discouraged, and it's probably going to not just stay the same. It's going to get worse unless I step out and realize greater is he that's in me. I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to keep this going. Why? Because greater is he in me. Lord, you're greater, and it can switch like that. And you know what? Those discouraging thoughts, Lord, you're greater than that. I resist those thoughts in the name of Jesus. You're giving me strength. Today, when I wake up and when I'm going about my day, Lord, thank you. You're strong in me today. You're strong in me. Anything that I face today, you're strong in me. I can overcome. I can do it. We got to wake up speaking and declaring what he says. So let's lay hands on ourselves right now. Let's just do it. And say, Lord, you're greater. The greater one lives big in me. Now we're going to do it again. But do this. Everyone smile. Even if you don't feel like it, smile. Lord, you're greater. You're bigger. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Doesn't that feel good? It's even better to look out and see smiles. So the smiles were probably more for me than for you. Okay. So John 4, 24 says this, God is a spirit. Did you know God is a speaking spirit? What do we know? From the very beginning, he did what? He spoke into existence, not what he saw, what he wanted. So, what things do you see in the word of God that you want? He put them there. Jesus died and paid the price, the full price, so that we could have them. But you know what it takes? Believing it and then speaking it out and letting the word create that. So, you know what? You have, you have stuff in your body that's not lined up with the word of God. You have stuff that's maybe not quite working properly. You know what you can do? Kidney, you're strong. Mind, you're strong. You can speak the word over it. And do you know what? Because you're a spirit being and you were created in the image and likeness of God, therefore the words you speak have creative power. Guess what that means? Not because of my ability. But because I'm a spirit, I have Jesus on the inside of me, I have the word of God. When I speak it out, body has to listen. Like we, we should be to the place where stuff's not functioning in our body and we speak to it. We speak to it and we say, you know what, hormones, get in line in Jesus' name. Hormones, you're strong in the name of Jesus. Body, you're strong in the name of Jesus. I heard a story from a minister, and he went to a lady's house who had, I think it was stomach cancer. And so basically anything she ate, she would just, you know, vomit back up. And um, she was super weak, you know, really frail, on her deathbed, basically couldn't keep anything down. So they were basically just said, there's nothing more we can do. And she was um, a believer, And so this minister went to her and, you know, came, he knew her and was going to pray for her. And so he leaned down by the bed and um, she just said, I'm so weak. I can't, I can hardly eat. I can't keep anything down. Anything that, you know, touches my stomach, it just comes right back up. And so he said, no longer are you going to say I'm weak. You're going to say I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And he said she was so weak, she could hardly even voice those words. So she, it was like a whisper. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And he said she kept repeating that, and he kept saying it with her. I'm strong in the Lord 
and the power of his might. And you know what? After about 10 minutes, she was sitting up in bed. And then he said she was saying it loud enough where he didn't have to lean over and hear what she was saying. She was saying, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then he said she started yelling, I'm strong in the Lord. Brother Keith, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then you know what he said? The next time you eat, you need to tell your body, I forget the exact phrase, but something along the lines of, body, you have a huge appetite and you keep down food. And he said, I don't care if you eat something and you vomit it back up. You go from the toilet, you wipe your mouth off, and you say, body, you have a great appetite and you hold down food. So you know what she said? Okay, I'm going to do it. Well, he, she was a missionary and he um, got word back that after, like, a few months later, she had gained, like, 20 or 30 pounds. And uh, the, the people who worked with her on the mission field said, Brother Keith, you'll never believe it. She kept saying, I have a huge appetite. And she has a huge appetite. She is eating so much. But you know what that was? That was telling her body what it was going to do. It's what we did earlier when I came up to transition out of worship. We had to do what? Tell our body what it was going to do. We have to tell our bodies what it's going to do. We have to tell our minds what you're going to think on. I, I just think we're in a season right now with so much that God's wanting to do, but you know what he has to have? He has to have a strong church. And you know what a strong church is? A speaking church. Speaking his word. That is how we get strong. We, we receive it and we speak it. And he wouldn't be having us keep going on this unless he's really wanting us to get it. Because he's got to have a strong church. He's got to have a healthy church. What does that mean? Healthy minds, healthy bodies, healthy marriages. Well, how does this come? You tell your body. You tell your body. So if you have sickness, you tell it. In Jesus' name, you get in line. You speak to your body. You know, when I went through a time a few years ago of um, just anxiety and depression and stuff, there was days where I didn't want to get up, I didn't want to do stuff, and you know what I had to do? Some days I didn't. But I had to make a choice to say, body, you're getting up. And I finally told myself, I'm not staying in bed. This was a choice I made. You know the power of your choice? It's super powerful. And I told myself, I'm not sitting in bed. I'm getting up. I'm getting ready. It was the power of, what did I do? I had to make my body do it. I made myself go over to the piano and sing the word of God every day. Did I feel like it? No. Did I want to do it? No. But you know what? I made myself do it, and I told my body what it was going to do. What do we have to do? We have to take the word of God, and we have to line ourselves up with the word of God. That's our job to say, I believe it, and I'm lining up with it. You know what? I don't care. Just like that lady, she probably threw up a lot more times than that. But you know what she kept doing? She kept going back to the word, and she kept telling her body how it was going to be. There's something about that. I have a testimony. Um, Matthew, our oldest, he had uh, issues a lot with poison ivy, and it started back years ago. And when he get it, I mean, he would get it, like, really bad, like probably bad enough where you'd need a steroid shot. Bad. And um, so we, you know, we would talk to him and say, you know, applying the word, and we're not having this. Well, then um, Samuel, our middle one, as of late, he never really dealt with it. And then as of late, like over the last, what, year or so, he if he was like near, it seemed like, poison ivy, he would pretty much get it. Well, just a few nights ago, he had a, some spots. And he's in football and stuff right now, too. So with the heat and then playing football and stuff like that, it just seems like it was flaring up and it was even more agitating. And so we're in the house, you know, and I said, Samuel, you need – to de we need to be declaring over that and continuing to speak over that. That poison ivy has to dry up in the name of Jesus. And he's like, no, it's getting worse. And I'm like, no, we're not saying that. 
you know, and he was kind of like rebuttaling me. Well, then Matthew steps up and he says, okay, listen. (laughs) And he said, Samuel, enough's enough. And you just need to do what I did. I battled with poison ivy too. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm not having this anymore. I'm done. (laughs) I'm done with poison ivy. And he said, and you know what I said? I'm done. I'm not having it again. Devil, you get off my body. I'm not having this anymore. And I have not had another episode. It was like the spirit of faith rose up. And I was like sitting there. I'm like, glory to God. And Sam's like looking at him. I'm like, he's receiving from his brother. (laughs) And mom's not having to do it. But what was that? A choice. It's like that dogmatic I choose to believe God. We have to reach the point where we say, no more. Devil, you're not coming in my family anymore. I put my foot down in the name of Jesus. Sickness in my body that keeps trying to flare up, migraines, whatever it might be, enough's enough in the name of Jesus. Body, you're coming into line. I'm talking little stuff, guys. Even little stuff that we deem like, I heard um, him talking last night and I thought it was so good. He said it's just there was something he was battling with, and he said, I just thought, you know what, it's finally gotten worse enough where I thought to myself, well, now I need to use the word on it. Know what, though? I'm not calling him out. We, who's been there? We just go on with a headache. We just go on with skin issues. We just go on with little stuff, little petty stuff that it's like, oh, it's no big deal. Why? Because I can handle it. I don't have to apply the word only for the big stuff that finally is out of my control that I can't handle anymore. Whoa. Guilty. Like little strife that's like, oh, that was just kind of a little thing. We'll just leave it. We, we dealt with it. No, 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 no. No, in the name of Jesus, we are not having strife in our home. And we take authority over that in Jesus' name. Like, we got to start doing it for stuff that we think we can handle. Why? Because Jesus already handled it. He already dealt with it. And we should be using the word for everything. The word is the basis for everything. Not just the stuff that I pick and choose. Not just the stuff that is greater than my ability to handle. The word of God handles everything. Okay, it says this in Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So what is that? He's giving life to what? My mortal body. This isn't talking about, oh, we have life once we move to heaven and it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. But you know what? He's giving life to my mortal body. That means right now, tonight, if I believe it, if I receive it, thank you, Lord, you're giving life to my body. Man, what a powerful scripture to stand on. Lord, right now, you're giving life to Matthew, Samuel, and Caleb. You're quickening their mortal bodies. You're breathing life into them. Do we believe it? You're giving life. Lord, thank you. Life is flowing into my mind. Life is flowing into my business. Life, where do you want life to flow? Okay, um, one of the cool things, I won't go there for time's sake, but I did have several scriptures just talking about how even um, not only the word of God, but we also have angels who assist us. What does it say that they hearkened, I mean, I am going to go here, they hearkened to the voice of the Lord. So what does that mean? I don't have to all the time being going, angels, come on, come on, angels, come on. What's happening? When I just said that scripture, 
And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. You know what? The angel's ears did this. Okay, I active, I can do something. Why? Because I spoke the word of God. And then what? They attend, they go to the word. They do, they do the word. Isn't it amazing that we have angels assisting us? We've been talking more just in our house just about angels. And I think it's so amazing to think, like, we have invisible teammates. <laughs> That's what I told the boys the other day. I said, we have invisible teammates. When I speak the word, when I declare the word, when I go places, they're with me. They're watching over me. When I send my children off, I can thank the Lord. The blood of Jesus is covering them. The angels are guarding them. And you know what? They're right there. I don't have to fear. What does it say? He gives his angels charge over me. Um, and and just, just being led in what, what you do and what you say, the Holy Spirit will bring the verses you need, the scripture you need, at the moment you need it. That's why it's so important to fill yourself with the word. Fill yourself with teaching. Have it on. Why? Because it's going into your spirit. And then the Holy Spirit has something to work with to bring it up to you. Our youngest, Caleb, was, he's very bold. But when it came to nighttime and sleeping, he um, had a kid at school that shared something with him. This was probably two or three years ago. And still, we were fighting him wanting to go to bed. And if you asked him, he would say, no, it, it's not because I'm afraid. I just want to sleep with you, or I just want to sleep with my brothers. Or, And finally, I, I forget which one, but one of the, his older brothers said, Mom, he told us it's because this kid told him something at school, and it scared him, so now he thinks someone's going to be in our house or someone's going to come in his room at night. And so we talked to him, you know, and shared the word with him. We'd pray with him. We'd speak over him. And finally, one night, I was like, Lord, we got to have, like, an answer. Like, I need an answer for what's going to, like, connect with him, um, where he can receive it on his level, where he can begin to use his faith. He's 10 years old. <laughs> where he can begin to use his faith. And I heard so strong. It was at night, and I heard so strong. When I was little, I had this um, picture that my parents had, and it was an angel over a child, um, the child's laying in bed, and it's like this angel. And he's, he's white, and he's big, and he just has his wings over the child in bed. And that image just flashed across my head, and I was like, oh, that's, I need to show that to Caleb. So I said, hey, buddy, come here. I said, do you know you have an angel? And he said, yeah. And I said, do you know your angel watches over you at night? And did you know while you're sleeping, your angel's awake? He never goes to sleep. He's standing guard over you the whole time. So you know what that means? Nothing can hurt you. You can sleep peacefully because God's given an angel charge over you. And I pulled that picture out and I showed it to him. And you know, for a week, every night, he said, Mama, can you get out that picture so I can see it? And I said, yeah, buddy. And I'd show it to him. He'd say, I want to see that angel again. I want to see. And then he started saying, I want to see my angel. And then he was going to bed in his bed, not even getting in with his brothers. And I said, Caleb, you've done so well. I said, how come you've been going to bed now? And he said, because my angel's with me, Mom. And he said, and you know what? Sometimes at night I wake up, which is what would happen. He would even go to sleep sometimes, and he'd wake up, and he'd end up in our bed, or he'd end up downstairs or in his brother's bed. And he said, but now I wake up in the middle of the night, and when I wake up, I don't go to my brother's bed or your bed. I picture my angel right over me, and then I just go back to sleep. That is what? A ministering spirit. You know what that does? That He was seeing that, and it ministered peace to him. Do you know angels minister peace to you? They're there to minister to you. There's so many scriptures. Just write this down for reference, but Luke 22, 39 through 44 talks about um, angels ministering to Jesus, and um, math, or sorry, Matthew 4.11 talks about angels attending to Jesus. Let's just go there if you, if you have that. It says, this was when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. 
And you know, he combated the devil with the word, but he was hungry. He had fasted. He'd prayed. So his flesh was like screaming at that moment. But you know what? He won every time because he used the word of God. And then I find this amazing. It says, then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Isn't that amazing? He fought off the enemy. He used the word of God. And then angels came to minister to him. Let's look at one more. Luke 22, 39 through 44. And this one I thought was really cool too. So it says, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Okay, we'll stop here, but I'm going to go back to verse 44. So this was Jesus right before he was going to the cross. Are you familiar with that passage? So he goes and he's praying. He knows what he has to do. He's needing strength, which is why he went and he prayed. So he prayed and he's like, Lord, if there's any way that I don't have to go to the cross, if there's any way I don't have to do this, please, let there, if there's another way. And then you know what it says? An angel appeared from heaven strengthening him. Then you know what verse 4 says? And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And I read that today, and I was like, okay, it just says that he ministered to him. Then why does the next verse say, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly? He couldn't have prayed more earnestly if the angel wouldn't have strengthened him. That showed me right there, Jesus could have quit. But the angel came and ministered and strengthened him to do what? To keep praying. And then it actually says he sweat blood right after that. But I believe he would have quit right there. But you know what happened? He was praying and his prayers allowed those angels to come and to strengthen him when he needed it. When you guys pray for family, relationships, over yourselves, whatever, you are actually allowing angels to do what they're supposed to do to come and assist you, to go out ahead of you and prepare things. It's amazing. I just think angels are so amazing. And the other night, this is a cool testimony too, just while we're talking about angels, but I uh, was laying in my bed and woke up in the middle of the night, which I was so excited about, and I told Nate, I kind of laughed, but I saw an angel like up in the corner of our room, and I've never seen an angel before, so I was like ecstatic. But... um. So it was up in the corner of our room, and I remember, like, looking up there, and I was telling Caleb, and he's like, what did it look like? What color eyes did he have? What was he wearing? And I'm like, I don't, I don't remember any of that. I just knew it was an angel. It was very light, uh, bright. I didn't see a face or anything. But I literally, I looked up, and I started laughing. Like, I couldn't stop laughing because, this sounds funny, but every other thing I've seen has been more, like, demonic. <laughs> So I was like, thank you, Lord, I'm seeing an angel. It's like, good this time. But I was laughing. But not only that, it was so joyful. It was like I could tell my whole room was just so filled with joy and peace. Like I fell back asleep so easily. And like I kind of like laughed myself to sleep. And that was it. But I thought it's amazing to see like just into the spiritual realm to see what's really there. And to be aware that you really aren't alone. (laughs) Not only do you have people here, believers here, but you have angels assisting you. You have angels watching over you. You have angels watching over your children. It's amazing. And they don't, like, fumble on their job. (laughs) Like, they're good at their job. They're, They're good at what they do. And it's not that we pray to angels. You don't ask to see angels, none of that stuff. They just know that they're there working for you. And it's amazing. And you know what? I, when I woke up the next day, I was like, thank you, Lord. And I believe it was just ministering to me that angels are working. God's working. When I'm sleeping, when my children are sleeping, God is working. What does it say? He never sleeps. He never slumbers. When I'm sleeping, he's administering strength to me. He's administering peace. Like, your spirit never goes to sleep. Your body does and your mind does, but your spirit's always awake. That's why, like, if you can play worship music or have the word playing or things like that, like, try it out. But you'll find yourself later, like, quoting stuff or seeing, hearing stuff. And it's a product of the word that you've put in your spirit. 
Why? Because it's always alive, and your spirit is always alive to God. So I probably took too long on that, but I just think it's amazing to know that um, God's given angels, and he wouldn't, if he didn't want us to know that we have them, you wouldn't see them all throughout the word, and, and you wouldn't see instances of them. But they're there for us, and he wants us to know that we have them. And he wants us to know that they're working for us. And to know when you speak and declare the word, they're working. They're working. It's amazing. Okay, so let's just stand up tonight. We'll just close with this. Go ahead and stand. And we're just going to declare a little bit. I know it's hot. I'm sweating like a whoo. Mission field, guys, right here. Okay. Thank goodness it's not like 110 degrees outside right now, right? We'd need some fans. Okay. So Joel 3.10 says this, let the weak say, I am strong. So if you're feeling weak tonight, what can you say? I'm strong. If I'm feeling weak, I shouldn't be going, oh, I'm so weak. Just so weak. Or, oh, I just can't. How many times do you hear, I, I just don't know. I've been catching myself going, I don't know. I just don't know. No, I do know. I do know. If you catch yourself saying, I just can't. I just can't do that. That's too hard or that's too big of an ask or there's no way. I don't have that type of personality. No, no, no. If God's asked you to do it, what's your response? I can. Yes, I can. I was just listening to that message by Brother Marty. Yes, I can and yes, I will. When God comes and gives me a direction, there's empowerment to do it. In his word, there's an empowerment to do it. So I can say, yes, I can. Yes, I will. If I'm feeling weak, you know what I can say? I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm not weak. I'm strong. What is it that you're facing? Let's close our eyes tonight, and we're just going to say this. And I want you, we're going to take the word like medicine, how many of you know the word is medicine? How do you take medicine if you're going to take medicine? Through your what? Your mouth. How ironic is it that we take God's word like medicine through what? Our mouth. By doing what? Speaking and declaring it. So we're going to say a few things tonight, okay? And I want you to close your eyes so you can really think about what you're saying and mix your faith with it and trust God's word. So let's say this. I am strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. He gives me strength. He increases power to me. He makes my way perfect. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. My heart greatly rejoices. The Lord gives me strength. The Lord blesses me with peace. He strengthens my heart. So we thank you, Lord. You are. You're strengthening us tonight. And we do tonight. We receive your strength. We say we are strong in you. We're not quitting. We're not giving up. We're not weak. We're strong. We say we're strong in you and your might and your ability. And we receive that tonight to do all that you've called us to do. I thank you for each person in here. Every gift, every grace. Everything you've called them to do, Father, I just thank you. Just a stepping up, a stepping up in what you've called this congregation, this body to do. Stepping into the fullness of what you have for us. And we just make a demand on you and on your strength. And we can do it. Say, I can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, you know, I know that's like a verse that we hear frequently. So sometimes because we hear it so frequently, it can be easy to just kind of disregard it. But if you really think, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What does that mean? Anything I face, I can do all things. What's the answer? I can. 
do all things through Christ who gives me strength. What does that mean? No test is too hard. Nothing at work is too much. I'm not about to break. I'm not about to throw in the towel. I'm not about to quit. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Well, we love you guys so much. Be sure to give an extra thank you to our children's and youth workers. Amazing. Imparting the word back there. But we love you all so much, and we will see you Sunday. Have a good night.